a lot of times, you know, one may think to themselves, you may think like the Bible is a book full of old, um, full of old crusty stuff that was written by a bunch of old dead people. And um, I would say half of that is true. The people who did write the Bible, I mean, most of them are old and dead. Most of them. Babies, I'm back! <laughs> back like I never left! What up, my little Bobby bump? <laughs> what up, my little Bible bumping babies? How y'all doing? <laughs> Bible bumping babies? <laughs> hey guys it's taja back for another youtube video if this is your first video ever watching of mine i want to welcome you um we are all about love over here like we're all about just being good human beings and loving jesus and and just going with his flow um so i'm taja like i said before i'm the oldest of three girls um, and this is our family channel. So we are a family of three pets, a dog, which a video will be coming soon. A dog, two birds, and then I have my sister, middle sister, youngest sister, um, three of us girls, and then we got our mom and our dad. So this is our family channel. And right now I'm in the middle of a series called The Bible and Baby Steps. And basically this video is for anybody who has ever been confused by the Bible, anybody who's had at least a small interest in reading the Bible for themselves, but perhaps has gotten confused or discouraged because the Bible, y'all, the Bible be Bible in. And sometimes it's hard to understand what's happening. And I will be the first person to be honest with you and tell you, baby, you're not the only one who has been confused by the Bible. You're not the only one that's like, wait, what just happened? You're not the only one who feels like the Bible is boring. Because it can be very boring if you do not first develop the habit, the, the urge, the taste for it, you know, the appetites for it. But also if you don't get your own translation so you can best understand the Bible for yourself, it will continue to be that for you. And so I'm here. I'm your... What do they call it? I'm your push-up. I am going to keep it real with you. And so the purpose of the series, as I said, is to let you know you're not alone. Okay, we're going to learn the Bible together. And I'm here to show you how to find scripture. And I'm going to teach you some things about the Bible. And I just want to let you know that you can do it. A lot of times, you know, one may think to themselves, you may think like the Bible is a book full of old um, full of old crusty stuff that was written by a bunch of old dead people. And um, I would say half of that is true. The people who did write the Bible, I mean, most of them are old and dead. Most of them. At the same time, the Bible, if applied correctly, and if you just allow, you know, yourself to just really get submerged into it, it can be very helpful in your day-to-day -day life. I hear a lot of people my age, they've said, oh, like, I believe in God, but I don't believe in the Bible. That's like saying, I believe I'm alive, but I'm not breathing. Now, that analogy probably wasn't the best one. But you know what I mean? Like, y'all, I hate to break it to you, but if you really want to get to know Jesus, like, you're going to have to read the Bible, babe. I'm sorry. And I hear a lot of times, too, and I, and I can talk about this deeper in another video because I'm very fascinated with this. But just... Hearing how, you know, the Christian faith absolutely has been convoluted and has been weaponized to validate racism, to validate slavery. And I want to let you know, yes, the Bible does speak of slaves. Um, yes, back in the day, slave masters used to use the Bible to completely disarm their slaves. They used to, first of all, they would try to seek to minimize even the you know, the biblical text that the slaves had access to, slave masters will rip certain pages out of the Bible, cross certain verses out because they didn't want their slaves to know the truth. They didn't want their slaves to know the truth that the God who saved them, the racist, bigoted slave masters, was the same God who loved the slaves and who didn't want them to be mistreated in that way. So, you know, while a lot of times we see you know, I, I hear a lot of people, you know, the Bible was used by the white man to keep us down. Baby, a lot of things have been used by the white man to keep us down. But do not become blinded to that, okay? Let me tell you this. Racist individuals did not author the Bible. They altered it. 
we're going to get more into the authorship of the Bible and different things like that. But I just wanted to put that out there because I understand that people have questions and concerns. A lot of times, you know, especially when it comes to spirituality, we can be particularly sensitive to the subject. Like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not getting into all of this stuff. I'm not getting into all that. But I just wish that we had this same sort of skepticism about everything else in our life. Like, we can totally be totally skeptical about reading the bible right god welcomes the skeptics like jesus welcomes the skeptics he welcomes those who question but at the same time we could go around and we could buy weed from somebody and smoke it up baby like i need us to be skeptical in all aspects of our life if you're gonna be skeptical about jesus christ if you're gonna be skeptical about the bible and its legitimacy baby be skeptical about everything be skeptical about the fact that you want to smoke and drink your life away, babe. Be skeptical about the fact that weed, although everybody says, oh, it's medicine, it's medicine. It has grave impacts on your short-term memory. Be skeptical. Be skeptical in real life. So without further delay, let's get into the video. So for starters, if you have not watched the first episode of this series, go back and watch it. It's okay. Just go back and watch it. To begin this video, I want to do a quick warm up. So for my babies who got their Bibles in front of them, open your word and I'm going to give you a scripture to look for. And we're going to look for it together and we're going to see how far we've come. We're going to see our progress and we're going to see if we can do this because it's much easier than it seems. So for my first warm up, let's go to John chapter one, verses 23. So guys, feel free to pause this video right here and look for the verse yourself. But you guys remember last week we talked about the table of contents. So right now I'm looking for the book of John and I see that it's located in the New Testament on page 1749 so 1749 i see it's located on that page as you can see i begin to flip through eventually i come to the book of john and now you guys see i see chapter one so i see the big one now i begin looking for the small 23 and that will be the verse getting closer and closer you guys can see the 23 he said i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness make straight the way of the lord as the prophet isaiah said how did you do did you find it <laughs> You see, John is in the New Testament. And like I said in the last video, there are two divisions of the Bible. The Old and the New Testament. John is found in the New Testament. Okay, for our second scripture, let's go to Malachi chapter 2, verses 15. So guys, we're back at the table of contents. Um, as you can see, Malachi is in the Old Testament located on 1559. So it's actually the last book in the old testament so i began flipping towards the back of the old testament looking for 1559 page 1559 is where malachi starts so i'm at 1367 here 1443 getting closer and closer now i'm at malachi so now i'm looking for the big two since it's chapter two Okay, big two is located. Now I start looking for the small 15 because we're looking for verse 15. And booyah, we got it. How'd you do? Were you able to find it? You see, it wasn't that hard. And even if you found this exercise kind of difficult, do not beat yourself up at all. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. It's completely fine. 
all you got to do is just keep practicing. And so like with every episode, we're going to continue to do these warm ups so we can become good at this. And it's totally fine. Like I said, take your time. If you want to quiz yourself, drill yourself, do that. But be easy on yourself. So this week is going to be kind of much more all about the facts about the Bible and different questions that a person may have in general. And so I just want to start off with just some nice, simple, breezy facts about the Bible. So like I touched on authorship a little bit in the beginning of the video, the Bible has many authors, okay? It's not like one person wrote the book and that's just what it was. Different parts of the Bible were written at different times in history and also in different regions um, and different languages and throughout, like I said, different years. For example, the Old Testament, it took over 1500 years to complete. So the Old Testament, that first division that we talked about last week, it took over 1,500 years for that testament to be completed. Now, these people who wrote this Bible, they weren't just writing just to write. They weren't just like, oh, let me make up this little story here and there. <laughs> no, no, no. They were divinely inspired by God. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so depending on who you would ask, you know, you may ask someone like, who wrote the Bible? And, you know, some people may be like, oh, well, there were several authors, you know, there was a Moses, there was David, there was Paul, there was Luke, like so many different people. But then others may say, well, it was written by one author, and that's the Holy Spirit. And that's just simply because God, like I said, inspired these individuals. Uh, there were even times in the Bible where people weren't necessarily writing about what they experienced. However, the Holy Spirit will reveal to them certain things. Oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my God. Y'all, it is a whole bill spider. Mom. Um, it's a huge spider uh, on my window. Can you see if it's inside or outside, Mom? Use your nail. Mom, you the only one that's not scared. Or nail ain't like scared? Yes, she is. I've been having it. I've been having to do bugs because they're not be scared. Mom, it's big. Bye. Okay, bye. Y'all, you see, the devil be trying to distract you. Look. Look at, do y'all see that? I don't know what to, I'm a, f I'm trying not to be fearful, but I don't do spiders, I don't do critters. Like I am like, I hope it's not inside. <coughs> <coughs> 